Picture this, it's 2015 and your club is playing against Chelsea. It's drawn 2-2 two two in the 95th minute and out of nowhere Diego Costa comes and slots it away in the back of the net and hits one of the most disrespectful celebrations of all time. And not to mention the play before he almost killed one of your midfielders. Things like this is the reason why Diego Costa is one of the most disliked players in the Premier League's history. Not only because of his overwhelming technical ability, but his mentality to football in general. Being one of the most dangerous and arrogant players of all time. But he wasn't always hated by everyone. So how did he become the most hated player in Premier League history? To get the whole picture, let's go back to the 2013-14 season where Diego Costa made his big break. Which eventually earned him his move to Chelsea in the future. At 26 years old, Diego Costa was playing for Atletico Madrid, and he had already become the heart of the team. Under Diego Simeone, Diego Costa was a lethal threat in front of goal, and when you combine them in partnership with David Villa, Atletico were unstoppable. Costa's work rate, tenacity, and willingness to press opponents made him a key component in the attack, and a feared opponent, especially taking into account how physical he was. And through the course of the season, he would ultimately be the reason that Atletico found so much success in the Liga and the Champions League. As he would score multiple game winners against some of their biggest opponents, like Sevilla, Real Madrid, Atletico Bilbao, and Villarreal. And he led the team through some very hard opponents in the UCL, like Porto, AC Milan, and Chelsea. And especially his performance in the second leg of the semi-finals in the Champions League against Chelsea left many speechless, especially Jose Mourinho, but more on that later. Anyways, he had gone Atletico Madrid all the way to the final, where sadly they would lose to Real Madrid and added extra time. And safe to say that this game changed him, and he started to go on his villain arc. At this point in his career, Diego Costa was already starting to be viewed as the villain, and he only started to reinforce these claims, making himself look like a big mean striker who just had a bloodthirst to hurt as many people as possible. And it was sort of true, as he would poke people in the eye, grab their face, fingers in their mouth, a defender's worst nightmare. But on the other hand, Costa was still an insanely technically gifted striker. As Diego Costa at the end of the 2013-14 season has accumulated a total of 36 goals, 4 assists, and 13 yellow cards in 53 games. By the way, is a lot of yellow cards for a striker, considering the most gone in a season season in the Premier League for any player, in history is 14, and the Prem can get pretty brutal sometimes. Additionally, he led Atletico to the La Liga title, and these achievements were enough for Jose Mourinho to go. I tell you what though folks, that's bloody nice. That is really... That is bloody lovely. And he ended up signing Costa in the summer of 2014 for a total of 32 million euros. Coming into the Premier League, especially for a team like Chelsea, is extremely difficult to say the least. In the 2014-15 season, Chelsea's attack had the likes of Drogba, Hazard, Willian, and Oscar if you remember him. And when Mourinho was managing, it would not be easy to break into any combo of that front three. But to Costa's benefit, he had an exceptional preseason, scoring four goals. And Mourinho gave him the opportunity to be the main number nine. He started his first Premier League like a madman, scoring seven goals in the first five games and getting three yellow cards on the side, but that was just the tip of the iceberg when it came to his foul play. Costa would miss several games in the campaign as he was already terrorizing the Premier League, but not just with his goals. There were two incidents in his first season where Costa would find himself sidelined for three games, because in the tie against Liverpool in the Carabao Cup semi-final, Costa would clash with Emery Kent and he proceeded to stomp on him. I mean just look how brutal this is. And this wasn't the only time that this would happen this season, as in the Premier League match against Arsenal, Costa would bump into Koscielny and Paulista and would stamp on them too, but he got off easy the second time. These incidents were probably the reason that no one, literally no one other than Chelsea fans, liked Diego Costa because he was a dirty and win by any means player, and Chelsea loved it. It was because of Diego Costa's contributions and goals that Chelsea were able to win the League Cup and make it so far in the Premier League eventually clinching the title that season. He is the epitome of the streets we'll never forget at least in London. And to think that Costa was not even full fitness this season was scary. In total, he had scored 21 goals, 4 assists, and 10 yellow cards in 41 games. However, Diego Costa came into the 2015-16 season with some pretty dreadful form compared to the previous year. He hadn't scored 3 goals until the 13th match day, but the whole Chelsea team wasn't doing so well. And in December, Jose Mourinho was sacked, and Gus Hiddink was brought in. At the time, Diego Costa had only scored 5 goals in the league, and he wasn't performing so well. He was repeatedly involved with many on-field controversies. For example, against Arsenal again, he was constantly just slapping Koscielny, and pushing him to the ground. And it did not end well, as he was charged with violent conduct by the FA, and was suspended for 3 matches. And another one against Stoke, one of the defenders made allegations of assault during Chelsea's 1-0 defeat. Clearly Diego Costa is a sore loser. And also in the same month, Diego Costa was clashing with Liverpool's Skirtle, and he appeared to have dug his boot into Skirtle's chest. 
but luckily he escaped punishment from the FA once again. Obviously repeat offenses like this and just clear disrespect for everyone on the pitch is what made most fans so sour toward him. But Chelsea fans loved it. And not gonna lie, it was very entertaining to watch him terrorize defenders on the pitch. And it wasn't toward the latter half of the season in which he started to score a decent amount of goals. And by the end of the year, he had scored 16, 11 assists, and 10 yellow cards in another 41 matches. Which was a bit of a letdown, but the 2016-17 season was when he got back to his brilliant best. The season started off on a much better foot than the last. As in the season opener against West Ham, it was tied 1-1, and late into the game, while he was already on a yellow card, he catches West Ham's keeper Adrian coming out, and hits him with a pretty late challenge. And then minutes later, he scored the game winner. What a performance. He had scored 5 goals by the first 5 games, and he really got back to his brilliant best, scoring in about 70% of the games he played in the league, some really good form, until the latter half of the season however, but more on that later. By November, he became the first player in the league that season to reach 10 goals, and at 28 years old, he was one of the most informed strikers in the world, but things would take a negative turn in January of 2017, as Costa had a falling out with the manager at the time, Antonio Conte, and he was dropped from the starting 11 for some time. And this definitely had an effect on his form, and he would only score 6 goals from January to the end of the season. And with offers from the Chinese Super League, which was the equivalent of today's Saudi League, an exit from Chelsea looked pretty pleasing. But his hands were tied as Chelsea were doing incredibly well in the season. It wouldn't have been smart to leave. But Costa eventually returned to the starting 11 in a match against Middlesbrough in which he would score a goal and help Chelsea win, which was enough to relegate Middlesbrough. Another group of fans he just pissed off. Weeks later, Chelsea ended up clinching the league title on May 12th, and in review of the season, Costa had scored a total of 22 goals, 8 assists, and 11 yellow cards, restoring his title as the dirtiest player in the Premier League according to the Daily Express. And sadly, at the end of the season, Conte texted Costa to let him know that he was not in his plan for the 2017-18 season, which would lead Costa to seek a new club. So Costa ended up making a return to Atletico Madrid, but he never got back to the numbers that he was putting up in the last 4 or 5 years, and it was clear that his prime was clearly over. As for his second spell in Spain, he only scored 12 goals in 61 appearances, and he ended up moving on to Athletic Monero in the Serie A, which didn't really work out either, only scoring 4 goals in the 2021-22 season. And it was just last year he actually made a return back to the Premier League, making his second debut with Wolves, and he managed to score a goal in April, which was a pretty nostalgic moment to say the least. But that was all he would do for Wolves. And fast forward to the current day, he's currently playing with Gremio. I personally think that he is just such a legend and he should probably retire by now, even though he would fit pretty well into the Saudi League, and I would like to watch him play there. But that about wraps this video up. If you want to check out another video, you can do that over here. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.